Folks, I appreciate you guys being here today. I've got an incredible stream for some of you truckers out there. As you see on the screen, you're looking at a heavy haul truck. And I want you guys to understand that this stream is going to be helping you if you decide you want to do something like this to possibly get in the seat. I have a gentleman on the phone. He's been a longtime channel subscriber. He's a stud. He's come out here and just reinvented himself, man. Let me introduce you guys to Chris. Chris, you want to say hello? Hey, how are you doing, guys? How do they uh, find you? Land? What's your when you when you're on YouTube in the chats, man? What's your name on the chats? Well, it used to be Carbon Base Life Form, but I changed it to Truck Face. <laughs> truck Face. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this, man. Tell them a little bit about your background. I've got a picture of your truck as you see on the screen right now. Tell them a little bit about your background. Well, I've been a uh, CDL driving four years now. Start out in Hot Shot. And uh, I mean, that was some people would think that was a bad start, but it was it was the best start for me. I mean, it get, got me on the ground floor. And uh, the first week I was out there, some guys like, hey, it's a little rig truck driver. And, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little rig. <laughs> yeah, a little rig truck driver. I thought that was funny. And, uh, you know, it took me, I did that for a year, then went off in the oil field and uh, worked for this guy. Uh, we're doing hauling water and basically I still had automatic restriction at that point, but the, the owner of the company didn't care. He said, come out here, drive, I need someone out here just to, just to be seen. So basically let me teach myself how to drive, you know, a 10 speed. Wow. Wow. Now, where did you get your CDL from? Which school? Or, or at least did you, did you go to one of the big boys like prime or somebody? No, it was a uh, Austin community college. Huh? Uh, there's yeah, a, yeah. They only had automatics, okay. Well, no, they, they had, we had 10 speeds, but uh, a week before the we took the driving test, it broke down. So the only thing they could rent was an automatic. Oh, man. So you, uh, you, had some, you had some things. I know you had some things to overcome in life. You had some things to overcome getting in the trucking business, too. Like yeah, I, I went through some self-inflicted adversity. But yeah. uh, that's, that's ultimately what got me in driving trucks. Well, one of the things I love about your story, man, and we were talking a little bit yesterday and the day before this stream, you're right now, after four years, bro, and I got I to gotta lift you up and throw you some props. After four years, you are moving the least and making the most of any trucker on the road right now because you're doing heavy haul. And I got a picture of, of the truck on the screen. There's another truck on the screen, another one. I think this was your first truck you were in, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, the purple one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The purple and white. Yes. Yeah. But you went from doing hot shot, kind of being joked with, you know, joked about by the other drivers. Now you're moving the least and making the most. And you said yesterday that even you didn't have all the experience for this. But again, it's about connections, man. You found the right guy that said, listen, I'll train you. I'll train you. You got enough. You got enough of what I need. You got enough of what the insurance needs. I'll train you. Right. I had a clean driving record, uh, you know, Never had any violations, you know, basically never, never got a ticket. So, um, you know, and I did, I did a lot of a uh, flat bedding. So, you know, well-versed with the weights and all that and, and how to, you know, how to load strap down, things down, chain them down. Now so, this, this, this truck we have on the screen right now, this is what? One, two, three, this six axles, seven axles, right? Seven axles, 26, 26 tires. And how, what's, the, what's the max weight this, this bad boy can carry? Uh, all depends on what the state will let us permit. What have you found to be the highest you've been able to carry so far? If you remember, uh, I think right now we're 129,000, I believe. That's, that's just, that's just craziness, man. That's craziness. So let's do this. Let's talk a little bit, if you don't mind, a little bit about this gig, because you came out of the oil field, you kind of bounced around a little bit there. You went to North Dakota, back down to Texas went back up into the Chicago area to pull for some, uh, some foreign companies. It's just like, like everything else, you got to find your path. You got to find your way, but you weren't scared of working. Like that's one of the things I've seen about you since you've been on the channel. You were just not scared to hustle, man. Right. Yeah. I did the frag sand for a while, but i never got any sleep. You know, I, I, circadian rhythm is that, 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 uh, does a lot for your body and, and just not getting, you know, the right sleep will really put you in a bad state of mind and, and just have you, you know, not, not, uh, not functioning well. 
Yeah, and I did that yeah. for three, three, four months, and that that just threw my whole life off. And I, I, I had to quit. Yeah, because again, three hours sleep here, four hours there, it just wasn't. So, oh, it's with brutal. this, yeah, it's brutal, with this, yeah. with this, uh, with this heavy haul, you know, we can only drive from one half hour before sunrise, one half hour after sunset. So, I'm getting my full eight hours sleep. I, and I know, sleep, I, I sleep good. I meant to ask you about that, and that. I thought I had read that. I it didn't like it wasn't at the forefront of my brain when I've been thinking about doing this stream. So a half an hour uh, before sunrise is that what you said? Yes. And then a half an hour after sunrise, uh, since sunset. Correct. Man, so you you're forced to you know you had to find parking. Now let me ask you this: Where do you normally park these bad boys? Because I I think on one of these pictures you sent me, you can see a truck. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. You can see trucks in the background where the truck in the background is, you know, still a third shorter than this one. Right. Well, parallel parking is a, uh, you know, you got, you got to learn how to do that or park at the end of the row. Um, you know, it's funny. I remember a year ago, you couldn't find a parking spot at loves or, or pilot. I mean, nowadays half they're half empty. Wow. So park, parking is really not that bad. So, you know, that's the thing. I mean, people are getting hot, you know, fired, laid off, left and right. But uh, I mean, I've I've got all the work I can I can handle. Well, I, I I've I've heard the stories about. I haven't heard it was that brutal at the truck stops, but we haven't been on the road since September of last year. I know the industry's taking a shot, man. I know some guys have turned their trucks in. They've gone financially, you know, just bankrupt, and it's it's t it's a tough time. And here you are, moving the least, making the most after four years in the business. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel blessed. I'm happy. I'm happy to be working. Um, and it's just, it just, it's the right mindset. You got to have a bright mindset to be out here. Well, now the company, I've got it scrolling across the bottom of the screen. You want to talk a little bit, a little bit about the company? Cause they, the Lee's the guy that you, you run for, right? His name is Lee. Lee. He's, he's a great guy. He's, he's a, a wealth of knowledge. He knows everything about heavy hauls. I mean, I think he even knows some of these scale guys, the, the, the way at the, at these way stations. I think he knows them by name. You probably shouldn't say that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, PK Logistics, he's out of Kansas, just south of Kansas City. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a great guy, very knowledgeable, very understanding. Um, if there's an issue with the truck, he's right on it. Like two days ago in Tennessee, I got a flat tire. I, I, something punctured my tire. I pulled over at uh, the rest area. Um, within five minutes... He had, he had me say there's a place three miles up the road. I pulled in. There was like a NASCAR pit stop. Pulled in. Within 20 minutes, I was back on the road. Wow. The flat, you know, so, I mean, he's he's on it. Wow. The trucks. We've got late late model trucks. Uh, we got a, uh, we got a, a, it's a 389 Peterbilt. I think it's a 17, 16, 17 with a cab motor. Um, that The purple and white one's available. That's got a Cummins. All 18 speeds. Uh, beautiful trucks. Well, let's talk about this though, because like the truck you're in, you sent me a picture of the engine. It's a brand new engine they just put in that thing. Oh, yeah, brand new, brand new cat. You know, it's it's gorgeous, gorgeous, clean. That you said you have almost like a disco dance hall on the inside of your truck. It's that big. <laughs> uh, it's it's the the, the W nine hundred Icon nine hundred. Um, it, it's it's a it's ginormous inside. And this is the red one we have on the screen now, right? The one that correct. You're in? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And, and so Lee's just let's say it on the on the stream so people see it and the and the, the algorithm also picks it up. PK Logistics seven two zero six two five two eight zero two. Now what is Lee looking for? What's the situation where you you and I are talking, even putting this up on the 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 interwebs for people to call in and try to work for him? What are what are his requirements? Number one. Okay, he's looking for someone with a you know clean a cleaner record. I mean, you don't have to be spotless, but I mean. Obviously, it all comes down to insurance. So, Twit Car is beneficial and bonus. Um, although I've only done, I think, two Twit Twit loads going down the uh, Galveston Port. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, it's ten ninety nine. Uh, prefer like three to four weeks out. I mean, just just because you know it's we're doing it over the road. So, you right. know, this isn't for someone to you know to be home every weekend. Right. Um, well, that's you and I talked about that a little bit. Like one of his problems he's had is finding the right person for that seat. And that's, what's crazy, Chris, how can you have a tough time finding a person for a seat that's paying 
the most and you're moving the least and you can't drive after after sundown. I mean, that's, right. that's the perfect job other than having to be out for a couple of weeks at a time. That's the perfect job. I get to sleep at nighttime and drive during the daytime. Yeah, it's 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 a great job. I mean, you don't have to tarpy loads. No tarping. And, uh, I mean, the the most amount of securement I do is probably eight to ten, eight chains, ten at the most if it's an excavator, like a big one. Yeah. Do or you ever? It'd be, it'd be five chains and four uh, uh, binders. Do you so, do you ever have a, a a car following you or leading you? No, they th those tend to those loads the uh, pilot cars. I mean, they get a big chunk of the of the of the load payment. Okay. They take they they charge a lot. So what's your what's your distance for your average uh, trip ballpark? Um, I'm catching you off guard with some questions, man. I apologize. No, no, that's not. Uh, let's see. It. This last one was. 1,500 miles I did. This one I'm on right now, I think, is 900. I'd say the average is around 900. Now, in your case, you stay out, though, don't you? You just stay out and run. Yeah, I, I kind of took a page out of your you and you and Hurricane's book, and I, I lived a no bad life. I, 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 when I was in the oil field, I went and got a, a big lifted truck, you know, $100,000 truck, and, uh, you know, I had the payment. But it's, it, the truck sat for you know, 45 days. I came home and drove for three days and paid $700 a month insurance. And it was, it was stupid. I know. Yeah. So, you know, I sold it and actually made a little bit of money on it, but I'm not paying the, the payment. I don't pay the insurance anymore. And, uh, I don't have an apartment. I just have a storage and mailbox and a cell phone bill. So it's just, you know, just, uh, how old are you? I'm 47. Bro, let me tell you, and again, I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you, you need real estate, bro, real estate. All these other things going on, it's a lot of stuff. I know you pay attention to everything. You're looking at crypto. You're looking at all the other investments. You're paying attention to all the news and all that stuff. But it's going to it's gonna get even better for buyers right now. And uh, as an example, one of the properties we, we just picked up is uh, 1600 a month in, in rent from Section 8. And it's already being managed. You know, it's already got a management company in place. Sixteen hundred a month, one property, and I write that off. We write, I shouldn't say I. We write that off. You get twenty seven point five years of tax depreciation against what you make. And a guy like you may bring in the kind of money in you're bringing in. And if you can have somebody manage your stuff for you at your age, you can be done working in five seven years. Like we're done. We can we can stop because of what we picked up just from the last two years of driving and just stacking cash. You know. Right. Wow. So yeah. Well, you can do the same. Listen, bro. I'm a puppy in tall grass compared to what you're like. We did really well for about a four month period with Amazon. I mean, we did really, really, really well, me and Hurricane. And we just ran our faces off and we still did well overall with Brothers Grimm. But you're doing again, you're moving the least, making the most and you can't drive after dark. You get to you get your normal circadian rhythm sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, back to what we're saying is about drivers uh, like. Obviously, we would want to um, experience is great. You know, definitely, they'd probably be the front of the line. But or if someone has a strong flatbed or step deck experience, and they, you know, I, I believe it'd be, it'd be a good tra transition for them. I mean, uh, you could need a couple things. You could definitely need a tire gauge and uh, pick up yourself some height sticks. Uh, you get those, the car haulers use those a lot. Yeah. So you, you got to know your height. But you got to be real. Um, you have to pay attention to every overpass. Like the, the first load I, I ever did for this company, it was, it was 15 feet, two, two inches tall. And, uh, you know, obviously that's way over, over height. And man, it, I, I drove from, where is it? Oklahoma city up to North Dakota. Yeah. And that was, that was, uh, there was a pucker factor factor there going under some of those bridges, especially because some of them didn't have, a uh, uh, you know, the signs on them. I bet it was, man. Do you have to file, do you have to go through and file a, a trip with the uh, states that you go through because of the, the uh, rate sometime? Yeah, we have to have a, a, a permit for every state and th there's a dedicated route that they put us on. So, okay. I mean, and it, they're lanes, like I pass heavy haulers all day long. You know, we there's like a, we, we wave at each other as we pass each other. It's pretty cool. Wow. Well, listen, I will say this, man. We'll read we'll read his information back off again on the bottom of the screen there for Lee. If, if somebody, if you have the experience, how many years experience does he need? 
overall? Two years minimum? I mean, it just all depends on the person. And I mean, experience, you know, you, you can make up for experience with, with just basically some drive in the right I, mindset. I agree with that. But don't don't be calling Lee if you've only been driving two months. Um, well, yeah, naturally. I mean, you got you, you, I mean, it all comes down to insurance. So uh, just be ready to send your insurance, your uh, license, your CDL, send him a picture that he's got to run that first before he can even talk to you about anything. Well, I'll say this, man, for what you've done, Chris, because you've surpassed me in the four years you've been driving, bro. And I, I know your story, including your background before trucking. And you've done a phenomenal job, man, just not being scared, going after it, getting after it. Now you're doing heavy haul, which I, I have always told myself and Hurricane, we're either going to do heavy haul after this you know, break or we're going to go to the oil field and I'm going to get you some oil field experience. But where you are in your life pulling this is because of your connections, your professionalism, because of your how you deal with people. If you were if you were just a I shouldn't I shouldn't say typical, but the 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 truck driver who always complains, always is there's always a problem, which you're not that guy. But if you were that guy, you probably wouldn't have this gig. No, not at all. I mean, people that complain just I mean, th there's a solution for every issue. And I, and I don't say problems because problems to me don't exist. There's issues, it, you know. Things come up, things have it's all about how you deal with them and how you look at them. I mean, there's there's a solution for every issue. It's all a matter if you want to figure it out. Yeah. Well, this is incredible, bro. I'm so proud of you. And I was looking forward to getting this stream up for you. Um, whether you get a, you know, a, a bonus or not for bringing people on board, somebody that can get on board with Lee who needs drivers, who, who the, finding drivers is the toughest thing because you can find a driver, but that doesn't mean you found a driver. It just means you found somebody to operate the truck. Doesn't mean you found somebody who knows how to run, will run professional, run clean, you know, and, and hustle, not, not, not the first week. Hey, I want to be back. I want to be back home. I've got something from, you know, I understand people needing to be back home for the kids and all that, but this business requires a certain level of commitment, just like the military does, you know, especially doing heavy haul because you've only got, right. you only got half the day to drive. You don't have a 24 hour shift to drive. You know, you only exactly, got, half yeah. the day. you've got it. You've got to get it. That shit. Listen, I'm impressed, bro. I'm so impressed. And I, you know, it's a Sunday. Um, I'm getting to the stream late with you. I know you know that, but I'm just impressed by you, man. Again, four years be pulling heavy haul, and that's that's just a beast. That's a beast. So let's read off uh, his stuff one more time. It's going across the bottom of the screen. Chris, what's your? How do you say your last name? Is Ga Gagnon? He, correct. Okay, so Chris. Just tell him. Tell him, Chris. Chris, the driver. He'll know because he he was told about this stream. Lee is the is the owner's name. PK Logistics seven two zero six two five. 2802 you said he's out of kansas city missouri just south no kansas uh kansas kansas just, okay. just south, yeah the state of kansas well listen man Correct. i'm proud i'm proud of you bro i'm proud of you and i'm going to be dialing lee's number when we get back in the truck here at the uh, you know after the new year i'm going to be well, hey Ray, uh, i i i owe like a big you know had nod to you had tip to you because uh before i even had my cd i was listening to your your channel and and i i I basically took a page out of your book and just almost listened to everything you said. And, and, uh, that's, that's basically, so anyone listening, you should go back to the Red's older videos and, 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 you know, take some notes and that it's great advice. He goes great advice. And if you follow that stuff, I mean, you, you can make it pretty far. Bro. And I love, I love trucking. I'm, I miss it. That's the one I told you yesterday. I told you, and I'll say this on the stream today, man, for more props to you. When you texted me, you know, we've been back and forth online. You're in the streams. We talk on the streams. We, te we text occasionally, maybe every three or four months. But you texted me about this, this information and, hey, we're looking for drivers. You know, do you, do you guys want to come, you know, possibly me and Hurricane? If we were seven, eight months further down the road, I would have said, absolutely, we're on our way. But right now, I just can't make the move. But just seeing these pictures of this truck and, and hearing you talk and we, we're not going to talk about the money because I hate making it all about the money. Anybody that knows trucking knows that heavy haul guys move the least and make the most. That's all you need to know. And if you're not scared of working, you're going to move the least and make the most. You're going to sleep at night and drive during the day, which is unheard of in the trucking business other than heavy haul. So when you called me, man, when we talked yesterday and I hung the phone up, bro, you don't even know what that did for my heart. Because this has been tougher on me than I realized, just having to change my whole life at, at such a young age and a healthy age. Because I'm a healthy looking almost, you know, it's just been crazy, man. It's been crazy. But you're, it's funny how people get used to 
lift me up that don't even know it. Like when you called, we talked and I hung up. I told Hurricane, I said, this dude that has no idea what he did for my heart. <laughs> no idea. Because I was jacked, man. I was jacked. Well, so, great. I mean, that, I, I like, I mean, like you, I, I try to be a positive influence in people's lives and try to help people any way I can. You know, I actually well, learned some of that from you. So, well, you've you've done a great job in four years, man, to be sitting behind the seat of a of a heavy haul tractor trailer. You're doing really, really well money wise. You're doing better than the spot market boys out there running reef for uh, and dry van and, and regular flatbed. You're doing better than them. And they they should know that if they know anything about heavy haul. But you're also a hustler, man. Yeah, I've never I've never called you one time or talked to you one time and heard you complaining, heard you just being petty. I've never heard it one time. And that that's the only kind of people I want to be around anymore. I don't want to be around people that complain all the time and find every reason that everybody else's fault for not succeeding. Oh, thank you. So I'm, I'm impressed. That. Well, listen, man, thank you for making the time. I know you just pulled over for the, the day, I think, and you're taking a taking a break. Um, you tell Lee I'll have this up probably tonight or tomorrow and we'll get get his phone ringing. And you tell Lee I'll be calling him after the new year. <laughs> All right. OK, I appreciate All right. it. All right, brother. Thank you for making the time, Chris. No, thank you. Have a good one. All right. God bless. All right. Bye.